morning. It is filled to the brim and it is Saturday, June 13th. And the Lord is telling me that and reminding me and us that we are surrounded. We are surrounded. But what does surrounded look like? We say that term, we sing a song that's actually quite popular right now. But what does it mean to be surrounded? And that's what the Lord wants to break down for us so that we walk in our lives and in our battles knowing we're surrounded. But there's also things that we do in order to uh, accommodate or surrender to being surrounded. So what does it look like? You know, the story that the Lord gave me was the story of Moses in the battle against Amalek. And Amalek, uh, it's found in Exodus 17, this battle. And God directs Moses to raise his hands towards the sky with the staff in his hand. Let me read to you that scripture, Exodus 17, verses 12 and 13. This is when Moses, for a time, has raised his hands with his staff in his hand, and he is growing exhausted. But Moses' hands were heavy and grew tired. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other side. So it was that his hands were steady until the sunset. So Joshua overwhelmed and defeated Amalek. Verse 15. And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. To be surrounded and to have victory, just as Moses did, what did it look like? Well, we look at this battle and we look at the example of Moses to find this. And we first find out that he himself lifts his hands. He has praise. He has surrender. He has obedience to the Lord in this battle to extend your hands. You know what? Nobody can do it for you. You have to be committed to be surrendered and lift your hands in your battles as you walk out your life. The second thing we see with Moses is that he is seated on the rock. He is seated on the rock. It's immovable. The rock is immovable and it means, the rock means that he was seated on the word. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the word. John 1.14 says that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. We are to be seated on the rock. Scripture also says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's how we live our lives. It's not just when something bad happens. It's how we live our daily life. We are seated on the rock. We fix our eyes on Jesus and we praise, we extend our hands, and we are seated on the rock. Now, this is when it gets even more interesting because a lot of times people say, oh yes, I know I'm to praise, and I know I'm to be a person of the word and live my life as the word directs. But then in this story, as Moses grew weary, there was two people that came by each side and lift his hands. One was Aaron and one was her. Aaron represented the priests. The priests. What do priests do? They interceded for the people. You know what? We need to have people in our lives that intercede for us. We need to have godly people who are people of prayer. And that is one way, that is another way, that's part of the way that we are surrounded is having people in our lives, in our community that we interact with that are true intercessors, that intercede on our behalf, people of prayer. On the other side was her. Her is not such a popular person in scripture. Who was this guy? Why was he selected? But if you look into the story, you'll find that her his mother was Miriam. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was from the tribe of praise. He was, his mother was a prophetic worship leader and he was the, from the tribe of praise. So he, there was the prophetic worship going on. So here you have on either side of Moses in the battle to bring victory, intercession, 
and prophetic praise and worship. We are to establish our lives in a community of faith that has intercession, prophetic worship, and praise. That's how we are surrounded. We are to be fixed. We are to be fixed on the Lord. We are to be people of praise ourselves. We are to be seated on the rock, be people of the word, and we are to have intercession and prophetic praise and worship in our lives in the community of faith. That's how we win our battles. That's how we win our battles. Now, there's a, another part of this story, and it has to do with the next generation. See, because God promises to Moses that he will always fight against Amalek for other generations to come. In other words, he will always battle against the enemy. And that is significant because you have Joshua who represents the next generation out there in battle. And the battle is won in this generation at Moses as a leader. But guess what? They're going to have to battle again. How will that battle need to happen? It needs to happen in the same way. Fixing your eyes on the Lord and praise personally. Seated on the rock. Seated on the word. Seated on who, with Christ in heavenly places. And intercession as Aaron represented. And in worship worship as her uh, represented prophetic worship that's how the battle is one and that needs to be taught to the next generation that needs to be modeled to the next generation and that needs to be lived out for the next generation so that they also learn to live it out you know what one of the things that the Lord is saying is establish your life in that surrounded context so many times we have integrated all kinds of worldly things in our lives that influence us even influence how we fight our battles and we show how we fight our battles to our children we model it it's not just talk it's walk how we respond to things in our lives and the Lord is saying in order for the next generation to win their battle you need to model how to win battles in your life now and that is to keep your eyes fixed on me in praise and worship unashamedly seated on the rock declaring what the Word of God says in intercession as the priest represent the intercession and prayer and worship a prophetic worship as her represented. Come on, people. We model it to the next generation because the Lord has promised that he will defeat the enemy for the next generation too because we are surrounded. He has surrounded us and he has taught us how to live surrounded. May you think about this word, pray about this word, and let's apply this word to our life. God bless you. I love you.